And, uh, you know, with, I, I just, in my personal life, I know without being intimate with God and having that daily intimacy with the Lord, uh, I actually struggle to pray. I, <laughs> I, can't, uh, I find it very difficult to, to pray without feeling His presence, without having a knowing, uh, not just, I, I don't have to feel it necessarily all the time, but just having a, a real love relationship with God um, really enables us to pray, right? Uh, we don't pray out of duty, uh, but we pray out of our identity as sons and daughters of the living God. And that may seem like, to some that may seem a bit cliche, right? What do we mean by sons and daughters of the living God? You know what I'm saying? It's, it, we, we can be so caught up in, in, in religious language, right? Yeah. Whereas really what, what, what I'm really after in my personal prayer life is a real relationship and a loving relationship with God and a close relationship with God. And uh, just on a side note, we were, we were uh, spending some time with Richard and Brenda Peters this week. And uh, we, we, had, we, we cracked a little joke between us, like, now since we're going on doing all this internet stuff, which is, which is useful, right? We have to compete now with international preachers. Because yeah? <laughs> <laughs> anybody can click on anybody and uh, really watch them live. So if anybody's actually watching this on the internet, I really want to honor you. I thank you for dialing <laughs> in. <laughs> because, because, you know, it's, it's kind of intimidating, eh? It's kind of intimidating standing here and, yeah, really bringing the word. I mean, it's, it's a real honor, but it can be intimidating. And so I just want to honor you if you're, if you're watching, all right? And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about prayer, really intimacy with God and having a love relationship with God and actually experiencing His glory, right? Um, and then we're actually going to do something unusual, right? We're going to, just to change it up for you, we're actually going to have a, a little bit of time of prayer. Right? We can, we, I've got uh, lists of people, right, that are not able to be here, uh, and their families and their children, yeah, as yeah. we were saying. Yeah. And uh, we'll break up into small, four small groups. If you don't want to do it and you feel at risk, you know, like social distancing and so on, if you, if you feel at risk and you don't want to do it, that's fine. You don't have to do it. But I'm, I'm putting a challenge to you guys this morning. Let's have a prayer meeting, <laughs> okay? Um, and actually just to really build community. I really feel like, you know, prayer is, I'm speaking about prayer, but prayer is not just about communion with God, but it's also about praying for one another and seeing God move in each other's lives through the prayers of the saints, through the corporate prayers of the saints. So that's at the end, all right? And uh, in our church, I think, especially in the vineyard, we, we really value intimacy with God. It's, it's a real value. It's not just in the vineyard, but I would say... Definitely, the Vineyard Movement was born out of a real desire to actually experience the presence of God, right? The glory of God, the presence of God, not just in corporate meetings like this, but in, in our everyday lives and uh, cultivating intimacy with God. Um, I remember those old Vineyard songs. Um, you guys might remember some of them. What are some of those, you know, just really... Um, when they first came out, when Kevin Prosh first came out with some some of the, the vineyard songs, it was it was kind of mind blowing you know, to to speak of God as you know you're the lover of my soul, you know, and and uh, just using some of the, the language from Song of Songs, it was just really unheard of. Um, I mean, uh, David Bruce, who is now the uh, national director of the vineyard, this is the side note, right? It's, it's not important, but it's kind of important. He was one of the first songwriters to really uh, write worship songs uh, based on the, the, the book of Song of Solomon. And um, it was kind of, it was kind of, it was a really new thing, right? And so when I talk about intimacy with God, I'm talking about speaking to God and saying, I am, you know, I am, I am dark but lovely, right? And so my heart may be dark, my, my heart may, may be sinful, right? 
but yet before you, God, I'm, I'm lonely and I'm your bride. And, and um, so it's really, that's what I really mean by entering into a love relationship and experiencing a love relationship and intimacy with God in prayer, right? So I'm not really going to be talking so much about activity, right? Religious works, <laughs> the, act, the action of prayer. But really more, I'm really here to encourage you and to exhort you into a, a daily uh, love, intimate relationship with Christ and with Father God and the Holy Spirit. And this is something that we need to cultivate. It's not, it doesn't just, you know, it, it doesn't just come naturally, right? And uh, a good friend of ours, Larry Reimer, uh, posted a post this week on Facebook, which I thought was really interesting, and summed it up for me. He says, you know, we, we enter into a relationship with God, we come into a, a relationship with Christ, when we are born again, right? But then each time we come to a personal place of prayer, we're kind of like we're kind of like setting our focus again and again and again. And the repetition of that, it's it slowly kind of cultivates intimacy in our hearts and obedience to God. Mm. And uh, you know, it's 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 an action, right? Let me share some of my own story, okay? Just to put you in the picture. And, uh, you know, I was, I was brought up in quite a religious family, and uh, a spiritual family. Uh, I, was grew, I grew up in, in Anglican, and uh, as you guys know, the Anglicans are very, very chilled, very relaxed, right? And um, I think that helped in a way, because I tend to, for me personally, I tend to relax into God and the, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, which, is, which is a choice, right? But I kind of relax into it instead of the Pentecostal way, which is kind of like stepping into it, you know, um, if that makes any sense. So, um, and then no one is right or wrong, right? <laughs> so I grew up in Anglican, and then uh, in the 70s, my, 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 uh, my mother and father uh, experienced the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's also very important, right, to experience... Uh, the glory of God and the intimacy with God, it's very important to actually experience the baptism mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. We'll probably get to that another time. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I strongly suggest you do. <laughs> right? When I was baptized in the Holy, baptized in the Holy Spirit, this, what, this is, isn't in my notes actually, <laughs> I, um, I really started to experience that real connection with God. And... Um, I remember, you know, we went through times, there was a time in the church when people were falling over, you know, we'd pray for people, and uh, we wouldn't push them, and they'd fall over, they'd be slain in the spirit. I long for that again, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> we need some of that again. Yeah. Um, why am I telling you all this, right? It's, it's really, I think that's really where my journey uh, in, a, with, in a love relationship with Christ and you know, Father God and the Holy Spirit really started, and uh, that was in my twenties. Um, we, you know, Amy and I got married. We uh, we went to the, you know, we, we served at the International House of Prayer. Um, we didn't necessarily need to go to the International House of Prayer to uh, to <laughs> become prayerful, right, people. But I think it did it did uh, sort of catapult us and encourage us, right? And teach us some, some more things about prayer and intercession. Um, today I'm really focusing on personal prayer. And I just felt like the Lord was really dropping in my spirit through the week. And even in the worship time, you know, that really we can meet like this corporately. We can experience the Holy Spirit together and it's good, right? It's all good. But what's gonna be left at the end of the day? If all of that is stripped away, right. the only thing that's really going to carry us is our personal relationship yes, with amen. Christ. You know? right. Me standing here, uh, preaching, teaching, doing worship, it means nothing, right? What really, mean, what really matters is my personal and the level of my personal relationship with Christ. And um, 
So I'm really, I'm encouraging you guys, right? Um, we're all in different places. I'm, we're definitely on a journey in prayer. I still find it, uh, you know, I have a prayer life. I'm praying daily. I still find it a challenge, you know. Actually, I find it easier to pray when I'm running than when I'm sitting down. I mean, that's just the way it works for me. Um, but I just want to encourage you guys just to make that time, you know. If, I, if, if you walk away in here today and you're more encouraged to actually spend five, just five minutes with, with uh, God per day, and, you know, I'm not advocating five minutes, I'm advocating one hour, right? <laughs> but I, I don't get to that, you know. Um, if you're more encouraged to spend time with Jesus every day, my job is done. Um, so I've got a few notes here I've got here. Prayer takes effort, right? Personal prayer takes effort. It's, uh, and God designed prayer for communion with Him. God was, you know, many people have said before, the Lord was actually lonely, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were lonely, and someday they said, well, okay, let us make man in our own image. And so prayer is just a way, and prayer and worship and singing songs and spending time with Him, it's really just a way of communion with Him, you know? But He really designed it for us and for Himself. Um, you know, just be present with God. It's quieting yourself down. We need to quieten ourselves down in prayer, right? Actually push aside thoughts and engage with God. Be present with God, right? You know, if you, if you just, you know, just, I'm, I'm really asking the Lord today that He would actually Im imprint this on your hearts. When you, when you wake up in the morning, you know, and you swing your feet over the side of the bed, right? Just ask the Lord, Jesus, what do you have for me today, right? What do you want to speak to me today? Dial yourself down. And even God, God acknowledges our weak prayer. And uh, another thing I've realized in my journey with prayer is I don't even need to say anything, right? <laughs> I don't, you know, just waiting, and you know, waiting on the Lord, just being still, He actually acknowledges that. Mm. He acknowledges just actually being still before Him. And waiting for Him to speak to us. Um, prayer is not about reciting <laughs> a mantra, you know, or a, if that helps you, fantastic. But, you know, it's, it's not about reciting anything, it's about just being quiet before the Lord and waiting for Him to speak. And God acknowledges that. He not acknowledges where each one of us is at. Some of us are, are years into the journey, right? 20 years, 30 years into the journey of prayer and close relationship with God where he, whereby He speaks to us. Others are at the beginning, you know. Um, others may feel like, you know, we don't have a great prayer life. We don't experience God in intimate ways. And I'm certainly on the journey. We're on the journey together, Inga and I. Um, but He acknowledges us, you know. He acknowledges where you're at. And... And if you feel weak, well, that's okay, right? He acknowledges where each one of us is at. So I'm, I'm encouraging you. As you wake up in the morning, just say, Morning, Lord, you know? God hears that. And He will respond. He hears the movement of our heart towards Him. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's look at some scripture. Because... That's going to speak a thousand words, eh? Um, more than anything. Here's John 17, 21. I don't have any overheads today. And uh, for a good reason, because I am uh, encouraging people to <laughs> open their Bibles. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> prayer is the place where the prayer, where the Word and the Spirit meet, Right? And um, it's a powerful place. It's a powerful place. Much of our prayer life is, and our relationship with God is, is also influenced by how we see God. You know? How we see ourselves in God's eyes. Does that make any sense? How God, how we perceive that God sees us. 
through his eyes. Right? Uh, and so, you know, it's, uh, the Christian walk is, is almost, I would say a large part of it is, is actually learning about how God sees us, right? how he sees you and me before him. And so let's look at this, uh, this is John 17, verse 21. And so Jesus is praying, this is the great high priestly prayer of Jesus. And he's really praying for believers here, in verse 21. It's a really uh, well-known scripture. It says, uh, let's read this. I'm reading out of the English Standard Version. That they may all be one. He's speaking, he's uh, praying for believers, right? He's praying for the church, his bride. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So he says, Father, I am in you and you are in me. We are one. May they be one as we are one. May they also be in us so the world may believe that you have sent me. I mean, this is a this is a well-known scripture. Really, what what sticks out for me here is what stands out for me is that Jesus is praying that we may be one, but not just that we are one one body, but that we are we are in uh, we are one with God, right? He's praying, may they also be in us. He's praying that His bride would be in. <coughs> You know, in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, that speaks of oneness and and uh, you know real, real oneness and real intimacy with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the oneness that I'm talking about. That's the intimacy that I'm talking about. You know, um, God wants us as a body, together as one, to be inside of Him, right? That's that's intense, right? Um, how does that that work? I don't. That it, it's uh, beyond human comprehension that God would take His bride into Himself, so to speak, and so that His bride would be one with Him. That the bride and the bridegroom would be one with Him. And this is um, something that is close to our hearts: is that we are we are God's bride, right? And what does that mean? We are we are married to the Lamb. And that we are one with God, um, that speaks of real deep intimacy um, beyond human comprehension. You know, if you have given your life to Christ, you are now one with Christ. You are His bride, and He is your bridegroom. Right? Um, it may seem a bit like flowery language for, for, for the men, <laughs> and it's challenging, but it's really an allegorical representation, right, of a bride and a bridegroom. And so, we, we being the bride are almost like the, uh, the female side of, right, there's the bride, uh, the bridegroom, sorry, who's the, the, the man in a, in, a, in a marriage relationship, and there's the bride who's the female in the, the marriage relationship. And it speaks of our relation, you know, we, are, we being the bride, kind of the, the female side, we are, we are almost, to me it means that we are more receptive to God, right? Yeah, we, we, we step into our relationship with God, but at the same time, He's come to us, right? Mm. He came to us first. He was like kind of like the man in the relationship, the initiator, yeah. right? Mm. He came to us first. He loved us first before we actually loved Him, right? Mm. And He wooed us into a relationship with Him. And uh, to me, that means, well, we, you know, when we're praying, and we're spending time with the Lord, we're actually almost like more receptive to His presence, right? Than necessarily having to like work ourselves up, <laughs> you know? We're already in a relationship with Him. We don't have to work to come to Him, but we do have to position ourselves, you know, before Him. We have to position, we need to position ourselves, but we don't need to work, <laughs> right? Um, like a, an estranged wife, you know? Um, we're coming to Him, we're positioning ourselves and we're receptive to His His words, His words of affirmation for us. And each one of us needs those words of affirmation daily, right? 
It's a daily thing. It's not a Sunday thing or a Wednesday thing or just a prayer room thing. <laughs> you know, it's a daily thing for us. Here's another scripture, John 15, 9. This is uh, a beautiful scripture. And so Jesus is talking about himself being uh, the vine and we are the branches, right? You guys know the scripture, right? <laughs> I'm sure many of you do. John 15, 9, it says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So, there's three parts to the scripture. The Father has, has um, Jesus is talking here, the Father has loved him, and uh, he has loved the Father. And then he says to, his, he says to his, his disciples, abide in my love. So there's three parts to that. And each, each part is, is, a, is a huge river. And probably each part it could be an actual sermon, right? Each part of this. Um, but it's mystical, right? Yet it's simple. It's a mystical scripture, yet it's simple at the same time. You know, there's a, there's, there's, there's a living relationship between Jesus and the Father. There's a living, living relationship between uh, the Father and Jesus, and there's a living relationship between the Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And so Jesus is saying, oh, well, abide as, your, as, a, as a bride, abide in me. Abide in me. And so live in me. Right? Abide means kind of live, dwell, and just relax, right? <laughs> relax. <laughs> just enjoy God and enjoy that intimate relationship. Hebrews 4.16. Going through this pretty rapidly because I want to get to the prayer time. Hebrews 4.16. Which says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Find grace and help in time of need. And so Paul is, um, is exhorting us, you know, that we can, if we, are, if we are believers, we have given our hearts to Christ Jesus, that we may approach his throne of grace with confidence, <laughs> right? Uh, as we confess our sin towards, you know, to God on a daily basis, we can we can boldly approach His throne of grace. We do not need to come as beggars, right? We can come as as those who are loved, who have a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We approach it with confidence. We receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We are needy on a daily basis. No, we're not needy, needy just once. We, we need the power of the Spirit on a daily basis. And uh, daily, we need to come to Him. And uh, very often, I don't know, we, we kind of, I don't know, sometimes I do find that I approach God. I'm being vulnerable now, right? <laughs> sometimes I do find that I approach God uh, and I feel like I might get crushed, <laughs> literally. Because he is so big, you know, and he is so large, and his his love is so intense, right? And uh, our sin is our sin stands before us sometimes. Our sin is almost too great for us to come into God, but he's he enables us to uh, confess our sin to him or confess to one another, right? And he enables us, he cleanses us, and he washes us with, his, with the water of his word. He, can, he does that daily as we come to him. But it's, um, you know, and as we enter into that, right, we experience the grace, just as the scripture says, the grace that we need for daily living. The grace to go to Walmart, <laughs> you know, the grace to uh, endure through these times. The grace to extend uh, grace to our children or our grandchildren, you know? The grace to ex extend love to our wives or to our husbands, you know? 
And this is the grace that God gives us through that loving daily relationship. I love it. It's a deep, it's a deep uh, relationship. And it's a relationship that we can experience the glory of God. And uh, so we don't need to come as beggars, right? It's simple. We come, we draw near to the throne of grace and we receive mercy in our time of need. And you know, as I said earlier, um, much of our, I find in my life, much of my, uh, it's saying, hunger for the Lord, right? Um, what I'm really hoping is that you're going to get this morning is more of a hunger for Jesus, okay? Uh, in prayer and through prayer. What I found, what really drives my hunger is experiencing His glory, okay? And experiencing uh, His Holy Spirit. Times of worship, times of prayer, times in our home group together, uh, in our life group together. Um, and uh, so, you know, I don't know where you guys are at, but I'm sure a lot of you have experienced the glory of God. We're all on, in different places, right? And uh, so I've, I've kind of got a, um, a bit of a video uh, to play. Well, it's really an audio recording, and it's uh, really from Revelation 4. Okay, and uh, the reason why I'm, I'd like to play this is uh, just to maybe expose some of us who haven't really, uh, um, you know, experienced much of the glory of God or the Holy Spirit, like the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, and 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 uh, haven't really uh, experienced, you know, what does God look like, right? What is his? What is it actually like His throne <laughs> look like? Okay. Uh, simply speaking, what does he look? What does he look like in heaven, right? And uh, I don't know if you get what I mean, but you know, in Revelation four, the the uh, uh, John uh, paints a, pr a pretty clear picture of, of you know he, he goes into into uh, like a trance, into a vision, and he he paints a picture of the glory of God, you know, uh, the sea of glass, the twenty four elders, uh, the four living creatures, and this is important, okay. Um, you know, it's not just in Revelation. Ezekiel had a very similar vision in Ezekiel 1 and, in, and uh, Ezekiel 10, where he saw the four living creatures. And so, uh, you know, when, we, when I go into worship times, I often picture, you know, this, um, this uh, depiction of, of the throne of God. And it's really important because it, it uh, fuels a, a fascination, right? A fascination for the glory of God and the intimacy of God in in uh, uh, private times of prayer and also in uh, times of prayer where we, we we have corporate times of prayer. So um, I'm going to play this to you. Then uh, we can uh, spend some time in prayer. And um, so the way that we see God in our spirits is has a great impact. On how we experience God, right? Uh, personally, on a personal level, where we just read the Bible and uh, spending time in prayer for Him. You're going to go for it, Richard? After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sodium stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. proceeded lightning, thundering, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a fist like a man, and the fourth living creature 
was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes when I called them, and they did not rest as day or night. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Yeah, I'm just going to end with that, you know. Um, my prayer is, Lord, I just, let's, let's spend some time praying. God, as we uh, come before you this morning, Lord, we, I just ask for each person here, for myself, for each person, God, that we would, uh, we would see your glory, God. Father, that we would, our lives would really be a love song to you, Lord. Father, that we would enter into deeper and deeper relationship with you, Father God. God, that our lives would be uh, marked by your love in our lives and your love flowing through us and out to us, out from us to others, God. I pray, Lord, that your glory would manifest in this place, Lord, in this church in this body of believers, God, Father, that your glory would come more and more, God, in our times of worship, in our individual times with you, God. I pray, God, that, uh, that your spirit would flow in a, in a stronger and stronger way to each person here, God, in their times of uh, speaking and spending time with you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your word that dwells within us, Lord. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, that your your desire is for us, Lord, yeah. and not against us. You're teaching your bride to dwell with you, Lord. To be still, God, and to know that you are uh, that you are in that you are in uh, charge of our lives, oh God. That you are ever present with us. You are you for us, and you're not against us, oh God. I pray that your spirit would dwell with each one of us, Lord, stronger and stronger as we still before you, Lord, day by day. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, I don't know if you guys are into this, but uh, 